hello guys welcome back so in this video we are going to create here a simple to do app that is going to embrace the jetpack compose and things which we have learned so far so as you can see here we have created just a simple to do app which we can add data and also we can update and delete data so as you can see here we have added these two to do's so for example here we can try and update this to do and we can just click this and it can be reflected inside here and we can create here a new to do for example here we can call this to do one two three and we can set even time and we can click this add to do as you have seen here also we can try to mark this as if they are completed and also we can try to delete a to do here and this is going to be reflected even if we close our application and come back also they will be there so without further ado let's get started now before we start you can come here to this build build.gradle file as you can see here i have added these dependencies these are for room and life cycle components the Kotlin component and the navigation component so you can just go in the description box below and copy them and we are good to start so beside that we are going to create this project from scratch so now let's get started now let's create here a new package and this package we are going to call it data we're going to put all of our data inside this package inside here so we can create here another class which we are going to call this to do Now inside here how to do we can create several variables so first we want to get the to do and also we can mark this with the entity annotation so that to make this entity class and we can make this one at primary key so that our id should be our primary key and we can keep this auto generate to true now let's create here a new file so inside this room we are going to create here a new file so inside here we can now start creating here and we can call this to do DAO. So now I have created here the to do DAO. We have here four methods which we can select. We can insert, delete, and we can delete all to dos if we wish to. So now let's create here the database class. So now let's create here our database class. And inside here now we can try to pass in entity. As you can see, we have annotated this abstract class with this at database here. And we are going to pass in here the entity and we are going to call this. So now as you can see here we have completed creating our database class as you can see here we are creating an abstract class that is being annotated with at database and here we are passing in the database which is the to do class and also passing here the version and export schema to force and we are exposing here the to do DAO so that we can access it in other classes and also we are using here a companion object so that we can access the creation of this database and we are using a singleton pattern so that we can create only one instance instance of this room database at the same time so we cannot have multiple instances of this room database at the same time so first we have made this instance to null and we are using this at volatile so that it can be easily accessible when this is being needed because it can be executed in other threads so we want to be visible when it has been created instantly so we are annotating this at volatile and also we are putting this get database here as you can see we have annotated this to be null so we are going to check if this is not going to be null we are going to return this instance and otherwise we are going to create a new database that can be returned so after creating this database here now we can create our data sources or the repository where we can fetch our data. so let's do this right now so now let's create here a new file so that we can access our to do so we are going to call this to do so inside here we want to access the we want to access the to do DAO. so we are going to create here a variable so now we can select all of the to do 
and we can do this by using the to do DAO and we can select all of the to do's so this one is going to return a flow here and as you can see we are just getting a flow a list of these to do's and now we can create here suspend functions so that we can insert and delete a to do and now we can pass in the created to do now we can copy this and create another one and this one will be delete to do and basically here we want to delete a to do and we want to pass in here the id so we can use this to do.id so right now here we can easily delete and add a new to do so now let's create here another function which will help us to update a to do example when this button is going to be checked we want to update this value here so in order to do that we have to create another function so that we can do this and now inside this we have to pass in parameters which is and now we have not implemented here a, a delete a update to do so we can just do this inside the to do DAO and we can add here another method which is going to help us to update this to do here we have passed in the we want to update this to do and set is complete to this value here which we are going to pass in where the id is equal to this so if you omit this one is going to update all of the to do so we want to limit this to only when the id they are matching so that we can update this so let's go here to to do data sources and we can call in here update update to do and pass in here is complete and we can pass in here the id so now we are good to go here and start using this to do data sources so if you want to use this to do data sources you have to use a way of dependency injection so you can try to use dagger hilt but for this video we are going just to create here a graph which we can use them to create our data sources so now inside here we have to initialize our dependency so we are going to create here let init variable that is going to hold up the database and this is going to be of type to do database and we want to restrict the set here so we are going to keep this private set and also we want to access the data sources so in order to do that we can just get the data sources so we can call this to do repo and we can use the by lazy here so that when it can be created when we actually need it so it's been initialized when it is needed and we can call the, this to do data sources and now we can pass in here the DAO so we can call the database and access the to do DAO which we have created. And now we want here to access the database and initialize this database. So we can create here a function and we can call this provide. So this is just enough and it is just too simple for this application but for really application you can try to use Dagger Health or Dagger to any other libraries which can help you to do this dependency injection. And in order now to initialize this we have to call inside the, we have to create here our application class so that we can initialize this when the application has been created. And this one is going to inherit from the application class now inside here now we can try and initialize our application so now we are good to go because we have already provided this so right now after creating this studio application we have to come here inside the manifest and provide here the name so that this application can be registered now let's create here the ui part and we can do that inside this here inside this ui and create another package and here we can call this home 
And now inside here we can create our composable. So for example, here we can create our class and call this and call this home. And also inside here we can create our another package. And here we can call the components. And inside here now we can create the home components. Now we are done creating these home components and also we can create here the view model. So now we can call this home view model. So this home view model must get here a parameter which we want to get the data source. So we are going to call this to do data source. And we are going to access this from the graph. And now as you can see here now we have the home view model and we can try now to create our state and in order to do that we have create here a helper class so that we, we are going to call this home view state. So we are going to combine all of our state here inside this so that we can just have one class that we can try and pass and not a lot of arguments. So for example here we can pass in here the to-do list. And we want this value to be false by default. And also here we have to initialize this to empty list. So by default. So if there is no any data, we are going just to pass in here the empty list and the, this one is going to be false. And now we have to create here a state and we are going to use the mutable state. So now we have created here the state and this one is going to be private. So we are just limiting this to only this class and we are exposing the state here and we just keep this get state and we return the state which we have provided up there. And also we can get the variable. So we can get here, for example, the to-do list. And we can get using the to-do data sources and we can select all to do and we are not using here a mutable state flow because this one is going to return a flow which we can later observe this so we are not creating here the mutable state flow and also here we can create another variable we can call this selected and we can use the mutable state and inside here now we can try to use the state And we want to understand if this has been selected or not. And now, as you have seen here, now we have passed in this selected. And what we want to also do is initialize these variables. So we can do this inside the init block. And inside here now we can launch the, we can call the view model and launch the curating so that we can access this curating's scope. And in order to do that, now we can try and combine all of these state which we have here and pass inside them here. So we have here the to-do list and also we have the selected value. So now we can call here the home state. So we can pass in here the home state and we can pass in here the to-do list. And now we can call here collect so that we can collect the recent values from the view model which has been provided with this flow state flow so we get here the home view state so now we can reinitialize our state here so we can call here the state dot value and we can set to the recent state which has been emitted using these flows and we can call here it So now after we create here our state, we have now to create a way which we can use to update this state. And now we can define our events. And we can do this by defining here functions which can be used to just change this state. And because our state lies directly from the, from the room database, so we can use functions which can be used to update this state. And now for example, here we can create here the insert, delete and the update. So for our case here in this, Home view model we want to update the to do when the checkbox has been selected or deselected. So we are going to call here update.
and we can pass in here the id of this to do so that we can update our to do and also we can try here to delete a to do so this is it for this home view model and now we can try and use this inside our home components and for this case here also we have to create the the detailed screen which has going to be showing our, our our data and now we can create here another 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 package and we can call this detail and this detail also we can create here another coding file and this one we are going to call this detail now inside this detail view model we have to pass in here the the variables so now we can just inherit this from the view model so when you are using Dagger Health, you can use this ID here and pass in the data automatically from the navigation because we want this ID so that when a user just clicks a value from home to be navigated to the detail screen, so we can use this ID to access the to-do. Now for our case here, we have to create a factory method that is going to take this data here and pass it to this view model. And in order to do that, now we can create here down a class and we can call this And now we have to implement this method here. Now we have to check here if this model class is assignable from, and we have to provide here the detail screen view model. And we can check this. So if this, they are going to be equal now, we have to return. We have to return here our detail view model. And also we have to return this. We can cast this to T because it requires this to get a generic method. And if you're getting this, you can just disable this and uncheck the, the error. So, so now we have returned this and else if this is going to be that, we have to throw here an illegal argument. So we are done with creating this factory method here. Now we can try to use it when we want to create in the detail view screen. Now for that case, we have to create here our state as usual, which can be used to inside here our classes. So because we have a lot of variables and for our case here, we have the two text field, the time and the, and the one which is going to provide the to do itself. So we are going to create here and then we are going to call this Now let's create here a, a state and we are going to call this now we can change this one to be time and we can pass in here by default we can pass in here negative one L. And this one is going to be of detail. So now, as you can see here, now we have created here our states and now we can initialize this inside the init block so that we can now get our states to a good position. So we can use the combine function. And now we can pass in here the to do text. So now here we are going to pass in to be a text. And now we can call here our, our detail 
because we are going to have the detail view state and then we can pass in here the text. Now we can call here our collect function. So we have forgotten we have to launch this inside the view model scope because we are going to call the suspend function. So we can call this view model scope dot launch. And now we can call this inside here. So we can update here our state. So now our state here is already updated. So for now also we want to update the selected index here so that if this selected index has been matched to that which we have in our database so that we can return that database which we want. So in order to do that, we are, not, we are going to create another init block here. And inside this init block here, we can call also the view model scope and we can launch this. So now we can use the to do the to do data source here in order to access the this data and we can call here collect so that we can get the we can get this id so we have here the list of to do we can try to rename this to to do and now we can use this to do and we can use a find here method so that we want to provide here a value we want to match if this So we were going to return here the selected to do. So if the ID matches and also now we want to update here the, so now inside this also block, because we are going to get here the to do, we want to access this to do and we, we have to reinitialize the selected to do value. If this is going to be null, we are going to return this to be minus one. So we are going to check here now So if this is not going to be equal to negative one, now we can try to update here our values. So we can call here the to do. So now what has remained here is just creating those states which can be updated. So in order to do that, when we want to update the edit text, we can use the, we can define here the events which can be called inside the, the screens composables so that we can update. And for that case here, for example, we are going to create here So now mainly here updating the state and other things our view model is good to use here. So now let's create our UI. We can now focus on the composable parts and create the UI and we can, we are just good to go. So now let's start here by creating the home view model, the home, the home screen. Now let's create here a composable. So we are going to call this home screen. And now we can try and create here our components inside here. So we are going to call this, for example, here we want to create another composable. We're going to call this to do item, to represent a single item. So now we can pass in here several parameters. For example, here we are going to pass in a to do. And also we want to check the checkbox. So we are going to pass in here the on the unchecked. Now, after we create all of these parameters here, now we can start to create our screen. Now let's create here the card. So we're going to use this card here and here we can pass in here the background color and we can use the material theme. And we can pass in here this primary variant. And also we can pass in here a modifier.
and also we have to make this clickable so we are going to call this on navigate and now we can pass in here the selected to do when we have clicked this So now inside here, now we can try and create our row, which we are going to start first. We have to create here a spacer and we are going to add here a modifier. And now we can pass in here the checkbox. So here in the checkbox, we can use the to do. And inside this to do, we can pass in here. This is complete. And now inside here, now we can try to reassign that. So we are going to use the on checked. So we are going to use this on checked method, which we are going to pass it here. And then we are going to pass in here the to do, which we have so that we can reassign these variables. So now after creating this, we have to create here a column and we can pass in here a modifier. And now we can pass in here a text. So we are going to use here subtitle 2. Now we can use this compositional local provider here and we can pass in here the local content provider. So we want to distinguish this so that we can provide here a different, a different view or the opacity of this, of this text. So we are going to pass in here content alpha media. So we are passing this text inside here and we can change this to body two. And here we have to pass the time. So we want to distinguish this and create a visual hierarchy between these two text. And now we have created here our column text and we can finish by adding here the icon button. Now here on click, we want to delete. So we're going to call this on delete and we can pass in here the to do which we, we want to delete. And here we can pass in the icon. So we can add here a bit of a space. So between this, we have spaces. And also between these two texts, we can put in here some spaces. So now we are done creating this, the card. So we can just utilize this inside here, our home activity. Now inside here, the home screen, we have to create one variable, which you're going to call this on navigate so that we can navigate when we are going to click a pattern and we want to navigate this to the detailed screen and now there are two ways which we are going to navigate here the first way we are going to navigate with using a floating action button and the second one is when we click a, a to do item so we are going to navigate to the detail screen in order to edit or to view more about the to do. So now in order to do that, we have to pass in here a to do if you're going to click this. So we are going to create and make this nullable. So, so if this one is going to be null, we are going to return here null when we are using a floating action button. So now let's create here and get our, our view model. Now, because we are here inside the home screen and this is the composable, so we can use a composable way of getting a view model. So we are going to call this view model and then we are going to call view model composable, which we are going to pass in here our view model. So we are going to call this home view model. And this must be a class. Now, after we get that, we can obtain our state. So we can call this a state and we can use here delicate method. And now we can collect our state from this view model. And, and now we can collect this as a state. And this one is going to be executed inside this composable. So let's create here a room for more. 
And now after we get this state, now we can use a scaffold. And inside here now we can create a floating action button. And inside here now we can creating a floating action button. So we want that when we click this floating action button here, create we navigate to the to the detail screen so that we can create a new to do so we're going to call this on navigate here and we are going to pass in here now and we are going to we are going to handle this inside the inside the main activity inside the detail the screen so that we can we can handle this and now after that we can pass in here the icon Now we can pass in here a lazy column so that we can display our items in the list. So we are going to use here a lazy column. Now we want to update that when the checkbook has been selected we want to update the state and in order to do that because our state is lying inside the room database so we want to update the room database so for this case we are going to call this unchecked here and now we are going to use a view model because we have provided the events that they are going to be executed inside the view model so we want to update the to do and now we can pass in here it which has been selected or not because we are passing a boolean here this unchecked and now we want to pass in here the id and we have here a to do inside this to do item so we are going to call this to do and we can pass in here the id of the to do which has been selected and now also we want to delete and for this case we want to delete this particular to do and now we can call this on delete sorry we can call here the view model and we can call here the delete function and for this case now we can delete here our component and now we have to pass in a to do and we can pass in here it and also we can try here to navigate that when a a particular item has been clicked and for this case we are going to call this on navigate and for this case we are going to pass in here the to do which has been selected now let's create here our detail screen and this detail screen here we are going to pass in here to variable so first we want to pass in here the id so we are going to pass in here the selected id so we want to navigate back to home when we finish to save this to do so now let's create here now we want to get our view model so we are going to get that state and other things inside the detail view model so as usual we are going to create here now we pass in here our detail view model and also we can pass in here the factory the factory method and we can pass in here the 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 factory which we have been creating here the detail factory model and then we can pass in here the id so we can pass the selected id so as you have seen here because this detail view model here it's going to have a parameter of the id so if we don't use this factory method here we are not going to get that id and we can get so now let's get here our state now we can use a delicate method and then we can use this view model and then we can get the state and we can collect this as a state so now let's create here another composable that is going to hold up the comp the components and this one is going to be stateless so we don't want to hoist the state inside the same composable so we can call this detail screen Let's create here another composable. Now, this one is going to take up here a bunch of parameters which we can use inside here.
So now after we create here our variables, now we can try and use them inside our composable here. So now we have created here a space and inside here now we can try and create our outlined text field. Then now we can show here a text. So we have to create here a variable that is going to be called the text. And now we have here to check if this one is going to be updating or it's going to save a new text so that we can change the text. So we are going to create here a variable that is going to help us to check. So we want to call this is and now we can compare if this selected ID is equal to negative one. So if this ID is going to be negative one, we know that this one is going to be not editing. So Now also we want, when we click this, we have to save this to do. And also here we can create a variable and we can call this to do. And now we can also check if this to do is going to be Now we can try to fix this because here we are just passing false so we can make here default parameter. So we can fix this, we can come here to this to do and for our case here we can just initialize this for example to zero by default and also this one we are going to make it to false by default. So now we have also to save the to-do because here we have just created the to-do. Now let's save the to-do. And now we can pass in here the to-do. And because we have set this inside the to-do DAO, that is going to replace if we are going to edit this to-do. So that's why we are going to pass the ID here. So if this ID matches, it's going to replace the text and time and it's going to update the to-do. And now we want to navigate back when we have created this. So we are going to call this on navigate here. So after cleaning, finishing to click this, we want to navigate back. So now we have already created all of our screens. So now let's set up the navigation. Now let's complete here our screen and hook up the navigation. Now we can create here and call this, we can create another composable and then we are going to call this to do nav, nav host. And now we can, we want here the navigation controller so we can create here the nav controller. And now we can pass in here the navigation controller. Now we want to pass in here the starting destination. So for our case here we can create for example a sealed class.
Now, after we pass in here, now we can access, for example, here our nav route. And then we can call the home because we want to start at home and use the route. So that is going to be our starting destination. Now we want to navigate here. So this home screen, we can just create here a trailing Lambda syntax so that we can navigate here. So we want to navigate to this composable here. So let's create here another composable, which is going to be distilled. So also here we are going to pass in the ID which is going to be argument. So passing argument here, we want to pass in the ID and we are going to access the ID inside here by using this to do. So for this case, now we have created our composable and here we can call this, we can call here the detail the screen and we can access this by calling here the argument. So because we want to get the long type, so inside here we can use this navigation backstack entry. So if this we are going to start to, we are going to create a new composer, we want to add a new to do, so we are going to click this button and return here, negative one, which we are going to handle inside the detail the screen. And now we can pass in here, so the home to do, now let's create here the, we can use here the nav controller and the navigate. And now we can pass in here the nav route. Now we can try to pass in here the argument which we have got. And now for our case here, we are going to access this. And we want to get the ID. And if this is going to be null, we are going to return here negative one. Now we want here inside the detailed screen that we navigate up when we click, we save a, a to do or we update so that we can navigate up. So we are going to use this nav controller and call the navigate up. So now what it has been remained here is just going to the main activity. So let's go to the main activity and now we can just delete all of this because we don't need any more. And now we can call this our to do nav host. So now our application is let it launch. Let's try and launch our application. So now our app is launched and we have here MT activity. And now when we click this navigate, we do not see anything here. And this is because we have just forgotten to implement here. So if we come to this detail screen, and now we have not just called this detail the screen component here. So I have just really forgotten. So I can just call this detail screen. Now let's create here the to do text. We can use here the state. So now I think here we have just called all of our components and there is one thing here we can go and check this on time change the here and because we are going to just be changing the same values here so we want to use this not to do so we want to change here the time we want to change the to do time and not the to do text now is it this detail detail view model. So let's try and relearn our application and see the output again. Now our app is launched. Let's just click this button here and we can try to add the new to do here, for example. 
and we can just pass in here random number and as you can see here now we can just save this and also we can add also and we can save and this one is going to respond and we can uncheck this and also we can just remove them if we don't want so if you find this video helpful please don't forget to subscribe and provide that like button thank you see you in the next video